Hey, hope everybody's having a good day. Jordan Trask here. I'm shooting from the truck because it's a little bit noisy in my neighborhood. I think everybody's getting ready for the holidays, maybe to host and blowing their leaves. It's a mess around here. My house is a little bit rowdy, so this is a lot more peaceful for me to talk about my 22nd strategy this month for my 25 days of Christmas. And wow, today was a, a really, a really good one. Let's just say, I think up to this point, I it's been pretty random, you know, even pulling up to O'Reilly's the other day, that was super random, just jumping into something like that. But today I drew pet store. And I think that's maybe something a little bit a lot more along the lines of Christmas. And most people, when it comes to buying a pet, uh, especially this time of year, it's going to be for a Christmas gift. So, um, you know, we could do something really relevant, but I think what we really want to do is, is why I'm doing this is because I don't want to just come up with a strategy just to do a strategy, a sales pitch, just to have a sales pitch and come up with something that a business or industry can just bark at somebody, no pun intended, and expect them to say, hey, this is something that I ought to do, right? Uh, I don't I don't believe in cheesy marketing. I don't believe in uh, persuasive tactics. Uh, I think persuasion is important in the sales cycle, but I think when it comes to marketing, you have to be able to tap into the veins of the consumer and really uh, figure out what they're looking for and what they prefer and then establish that memory, right? So without too much of, of a rambled introduction i'm going to jump right into this and uh, initially you know when you think of somebody shopping for a pet right i'm hopefully i don't lose light here uh but somebody that's shopping for a pet i think they most most cases they know what they're looking for they they kind of know what type of pet that they want to get uh if they have young kids and they want to start somebody off i started my son off with a tortoise pretty simple right still got it almost two years now um he had a mishap at the beginning but uh, that's neither here nor there that's that's a good move. You kind of know that's what you want to start them with. But when it comes to the dog, you know, uh, even even a dog, I think most people kind of know what, what breed they want. So I'm sitting here thinking as I'm pulling pulling back here, you know, does, does somebody just does a dad or, or a parent just just walk into a pet smart or something and just browse and then look for something that's going to catch their eye? Like you go to the toy store or do they really, you know, know what they're looking for? I, I don't personally don't know this. I haven't researched this. I, I would if somebody were to hire me. But I would assume just initially off bat here that they don't. I think if I'm going into PetSmart, I sometimes take my kids there to, you know, keep them occupied and, and tickle their ears a little bit so I don't have to get them some pets, let them play with some little critters and stuff. But typically, I think somebody's not just going to walk walk right in there and browse around. I Personally, I wouldn't. Um, I'm going to kind of know where I'm going, what I'm going to buy, have some options to go to. And I if I'm going to buy a dog... I, Hands down, I'm not buying it from a pet store, you know. I just think that's kind of sketchy. You're going to find a breeder. So maybe, you know, this could even be applicable for a breeder. If you're a dog breeder and you want to get into some marketing for the holidays, you know, don't just say, hey, I got 12 puppies here. They're fresh, purebred. You know, they I got their shots. Duh. I mean, this is all stuff that, that should happen if you're if you got a clean operation going on. Um, but, but you want to catch people's attention so that they mem remember you. So... My son's birthday is in, in March, and I've been talking about getting him an iguana, right? So right now, I mean, if I saw a commercial right now that, that spoke to me, that might be something I remember down the road from driving down Pet Smart in um, February, the end of February or something. And I'm thinking like, man, you know, I should just swing in there and see what the price are, maybe just ask some questions, right? That's, and, and, I, and I remember that, that brand based on a commercial that I saw. That's eliciting a memory. That's the stuff that we're talking about. If I keep telling my daughter I'm going to get her a goldfish and I keep putting it off, I drive by, I see it. It's a brand identification, realization. It's part of the sales cycle. I'm going to walk in and get that sales cycle started, right? Um, but when it comes comes to just general brand recognition and, and saying, hey, we're, we're, we're a good operation, you know, uh, family-owned operator, whatever the case may be, um, you know, um, you got to be a little bit more creative with it. So... What I'm thinking, just really just as I'm buying myself time as usual, I'm thinking when I, when I go in to look at a dog, you know, say I'm going to look at a litter, you know, think about how them dogs might feel <laughs> if, you know, if I have a specific type of trait or whatever that I'm looking in a dog, if I want cropped ears or something like that, and, you know, one of the dogs got a floppy ear, uh, just imagine that after a couple of people come to buy those dogs, and if you're the last dog out of each litter, just imagine... You know, it might be funny initially thinking here to do a commercial where you have a dog that ends up having to have therapy or something after it gets uh, bought or adopted, uh, whatever the operation that you have is. And 
um, it's like, do these people that bought me, do they really love me? Do they really like me? Is this, is this too good to be true? Because I just went through six weeks of people saying, ew, you know, I don't like you. I don't want, I want this one. I don't want this one. And, and now I'm traumatized. You know, I need, I need some counseling. I need a good family that's going to love me, you know? And, you know, maybe they give the gift as a Christmas present and you could tie that in a little bit. And, the puppy's just really depressed or down. I, I'm not laughing at that like it's funny, but I mean, just thinking from that from that dog's perspective, you know, or, or whatever an, other animal, man, uh, that would be kind of a little bit tough to get over, you know. If, if especially you think of like a child, maybe just in general getting picked last to play basketball. You know, I did a post about uh, picking teams a couple weeks ago, so that's kind of relevant, but. After time, you're probably going to stop playing basketball. Maybe it motivates you to go get better, right? Sometimes it does, but maybe you go play soccer. Maybe they, you're better at soccer and you're not the last person picked. You go home, you don't want to eat dinner, all these things, because you're just really sad. Nobody wants to play with you. Nobody picks you. You're terrible at basketball. So I could just imagine this, this puppy's state of mind after it, it gets a home. This is great. I finally got cho chosen, but is it too good to be true? I think that would be funny. Another thing I think uh, it, it would be cool to, to, now that we're talking about animals' perspectives, is, you know, people, the people choose the animals. But like the traits and characteristics that they like, they choose them. And what, what if there was, we did a commercial where the animals, you know, started picking the humans. So this human walks in and they really want to get taken. Maybe you have some puppies in the front window that are every person, little boy that walks by like, me, 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 pick me, ha, ha but the boy can't come in, his parents won't let him by, then you got this guy that comes in, maybe he looks really creepy, or he doesn't take care of himself, or he's picking his nose or something, and you got all the dogs who are like, oh, snap, like, I don't, no, we're, we don't want this owner, I don't want him, and they're able to actually kind of choose, and maybe they sabotage each other, or, uh, you know, they have this plan put together in the store to get the guy out so that nobody gets taken home by this guy, or, or maybe it's a little crazy girl. If you guys seen Finding Nemo, <laughs> the little girl that comes in uh, with the braces, I think, with the orthodontist. Or, uh, Nemo's in the, the orthodontist office, right, in the fish tank. And every time she comes in, they freak out because she always reaches her hand in there and stuff. So maybe you have one of them little girls that's really sloppy, really aggressive, like my little Cora kind of is. And it's just not intentionally mean to the animals, you know, but just just a little bit too strong for the animals. Squeeze them a little bit too tight. And maybe she comes in frequently and they all try to sabotage her. So, you know, even the fishes are maybe in on it where they're maybe spitting on the floor to make her slip or something so that she has to leave and get an ambulance or something. I think that would be funny. I think and it, it like just really settling on something here to be able to, to, to wrap up this video. I, I personally think that would be awesome to do during the holidays. Maybe have you know, this, this shop or this pet store that's not open as much during the holidays. And uh, so the animals are kind of bummed, but they know that when it is open, it's crazy. And they're all, they got this system where different animals are watching out or, or looking out for each other to make sure none of them get taken home by somebody shady or creepy or potentially abusive, right? Um, and then maybe even, you could even do a partnership with, with a humane society or something that saves animals uh, from abusers or something like that to where you can kind of say, this is no laughing matter. This is a real issue. And this is something that we stand stand for and stand by. And so that, see, that's the little stuff like that that you could put at the end of a commercial that adds a value to where, um, you know, if you're a partner or proceeds go to s certain things that a pet, good pet owners value. Wow, just think about that. If there's a pet smart or pet not smart, <laughs> if they're two competitive companies, because I really don't know anybody else that sells pets other than PetSmart, I think they pretty much took over the market. Um, then, you know, puppies are same, they're, they got the same prices for puppies, cats, whatever the case may be. And the person chooses the company that gives $2 to the Humane Society or something, or they have recycled collars. Maybe you, just one little thing that you could do that's green or environmentally friendly or mental health awareness, or maybe it helps, uh, people that can't afford dog training, right? <clears throat> that can't afford uh, proper discipline and training and stuff for their pets. Uh, that maybe, you know, takes a bite out of, um, you know, 
situations or emergencies where kids or people get bit by dogs or something, right? Because they're not properly trained or you get dogs that fight at the park or something. We see this all the time um, because they don't have good manners. They don't have good etiquette. They don't have respect for their owners and they pretty much do what they want. They kind of say that about some kids too. But Anyways, that, that'd be another good video uh, for another day for a whole other industry because it has nothing to do with pre-focus. But I think... Um, adding, adding the value, it's like that cherry on top, you know, it's that gift during the season that, uh, that's really important. I think that's what people remember during these, this time is, is little things that give back, uh, little added elements to shop there, right? We're not giving away things. We're not giving away deals. We're not saying buy one, get one. We have the best pups. You ought to do this. You ought to do that. You know, watch out for the you oughtas and, um, don't you know, give away the barn. You don't have to add value to it. Maybe give some money to something. Uh, you know, saving the consumer's money is important, but maybe you, you save them, save some trees by having some, I don't know, bamboo collars or something. You know, so there's tons of stuff like that or bamboo bags to pick up poopy, uh, some scoopers and stuff. It's just little stuff like that to get people to come in the store. And if they buy a puppy, they're going to buy all this other stuff too, uh, because it's different. It's unique. It's added value. It's it's enhancing the quality of the experience in general. And so um, I would really uh, stretch that out as much as I can. I mean, we're only been on here for 12 minutes, and that's just all the ideas that we just came up with. It's just, well, I guess not we, um, but it could be we if, if you want to give me a call and talk about it or you have something that maybe you are running that hasn't been fruitful or um, maybe just needs a couple little bit little tweaks here and there to, to make it catch on. I think... That's what a lot of people, business owners, don't realize. And you're not an expert in marketing. You're not an expert in uh, market research or consumer understanding or, or you know, the brand experience and identification and all these different things that the layers and layers and layers that go into marketing. And that's okay. You know, that's why you pay somebody to come on, pay them a, a couple hundred, a couple thousand bucks, whatever, however extensive your campaign or processes or uh, project may be. And then you have that peace of mind knowing that you're able to maximize your results and you're not missing any areas or you don't have leaky buckets along the way. Because everybody knows, especially if, if you're selling pets, you know, you miss one or two customers a week here or there. I mean, you're talking about over 100 missed opportunities throughout the year. I mean, you got to be able to calculate these things and measure it and understand, hey, if I can close one extra a month, that really sets me up. That really uh, enhances my bottom line. That lets me do more things. That lets me be more flexible. And if I run into a drought, I don't know if there's ever a drought people don't want pets, but I'd imagine over the last year or so that um, that's probably one of them things that people decided not to spend money on. You know, a pet is not only expensive, but um, if you got to move around and stuff or you don't have, um, you know, uh, a a home that you know you're kind of nestled into and and you you don't really have that certainty moving forward it can be hard to add you know make an addition to your home and then all the expenses that come with it so uh, you know if you're going to do any marketing as as a pet dealer we'll say that then you got to be wise with it you got to be smart and you got to be tactful not to manipulate or persuade or convince people right but to reach them and that's what pre-focus is all about and sometimes you just got to be able to think things through and and make sure that you're not wasting money. So with that being said, be purposeful with everything that you do. And always remember to pre-focus, guys. Have a good rest of your week.